Welcome back to Development Division with Chris. And today, well, Sunday, I have my first autocross of the season. It's going to be my second season. Uh, however, the car needs to be fixed because it doesn't run currently. The alternator, I believe, is dead. I've already checked the fuses. I'll put that up on the screen if you guys have the same issue. I believe it's number 10 or number 4. I'll put it up on the screen. We need to fix that alternator. We need it to charge or else we will be dead in the water. And then second, we have another wheel bearing job to do. I pulled a spare knuckle off of a EX sedan. Uh, this should fit just fine. I believe the knuckles are all the same. I have a new Beck gnarly wheel bearing to press in, so we'll be doing that as well. So we have 12.8 sitting there. So we should be able to start this thing up and as it's running, I'm gonna probe my alternator here and this should be charging up to 14. You can also probe on your battery. Uh, I'm just gonna go directly to the alternator. But let me start this baby up. Woo, baby. Listen to that purse. So let's check. See, as we're seeing here, this thing is actually uncharging. So this, this charging system is not working. It's a little bit sporadic, to be honest. You see it? A little bit sporadic, but it's pretty much just going down. I know my belt is an issue because it is, uh, the tensioner needs to be replaced. And the belt probably needs to be replaced too. So I'm thinking maybe the alternator is just not spinning. But I'm looking in there and it's spinning. So it should be producing some sort of energy here. I know if I go long enough, it happened earlier, the car will just start to shut itself off. See, we're down 10.5, 10.6. It's not maintaining that charge. So I'm going to take this off. It's pretty quick. Let's go over it. There, disconnect the negative terminal from the battery. Remove the connections. Pull it out. Pop it in. millimeter closed and open-ended wrench I want to use the open-ended wrench uh, portion for this stick this in here you have your tensioner down here let me show you that so that little piece of metal sticking out that looks like a hex kind of looks like a bolt top of a bolt maybe the head of a nut that's what we put our 19 millimeter wrench on now, what you might need to do is remove this portion of the motor mount, the volcano mount as we call it. Uh, this can be done by removing these two bolts. Remove this uh, dog bone out and then you have some bolts here, one and two. There's a nut connecting this aluminum piece to this rubber volcano mount. I believe there is one. Uh, so watch out for that one too. So total there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts uh, plus a grounding strap. I'm not gonna do that or I'm gonna try to get away with not doing that. Hopefully this is in the right position but I have my wrench here. I'm gonna stick it on and as I push up, my belt is gonna release tension. So I'm gonna flick the belt off real quick just from the alternator. I don't wanna undo it all the way just to save me some time, I'm not gonna replace the belt today. I'm just going to be replacing the alternator. So I'm just gonna take it off just this pulley and it should be able to stay in place long enough to when I get the new alternator in, I, it'll be quick to just put the belt back on. I won't have to reroute it and all that. So as you can see, I got the belt down. It's still down in there. There's the belt right there. Just flipped it over. And now my alternator 
is disconnected from the serpentine belt. Next up, we have some connectors here. We have a 10 millimeter nut, we have a factory style clip connector, and we have another clip connector that's actually under this rubber boot here. The tab for it is in the front. What you're gonna need, little flathead screwdriver. And see this arrow? There's an arrow on top of this connector. You might see these on connectors for doors, uh, if you're into that type of stuff. Uh, but for this, it's just telling you where the tab is located. Uh, if you pull this cover up and over, remove it, and there you go tab is directly where the arrow was so you don't have to take off this rubber boot you can actually just skip that go straight to the screwdriver to this area of the boot and that will release your connector however since I already have it off I'm going to go ahead and just push this forward there we go. there's one connector there this next one last time I replaced this alternator I zip tied it uh, you'll have a factory clip uh, mount here in this area. Uh, you can just undo that. All it is is keeping this wire uh, kind of up high so it doesn't rest on the alternator, possibly damage the wires. So we're done. I'm just going to undo my zip tie from previous. Might need some pliers to pull this out. I'll be making use of these. You know those pliers to pry. Oh, well, yeah, I cut it again and it came out. So, whatever. Good deal. This is loosened now, so all I need to do is push the tab, pull it out. Tab is located right there. So now we have that out. Our last connector here is going to be a 10 millimeter nut. Lefty loosey, right and tight. There's, once I break it loose, what I can do is just run this out, just to sock it in the fingertips. Don't lose this. Disconnect that. And we have a tab here that we slide over. We'll push that over, and that will release this part of the harness. Let's tuck this up over here next to our ignition coils and our O2 sensor. We have Everything connected from to the car, uh, electronically disconnected. We have the serpentine belt disconnected. Now we just need to take it out from the mounts that hold it to the engine. We're going to need a, a socket here. I believe it's a 12 millimeter. So the combination works the best. This one is a deep socket. It looks like a 12. There's one mounting point. And I believe the second one is right here in the front. Yeah, it's directly under the pulley here. There's a bolt directly under the pulley here. My fingertip is on it. You guys will see it soon, but you guys can't see it right now. But it's under my fingertip. And then the other mounting bolt is right here just right behind this bracket. Follow this bracket down, you'll see a 12 millimeter bolt hanging out. Got those two bolts out. This thing should pry out. Yeah, it's coming out. Got a pry bar gently. There we go. Alternator is out. All right. This is our old alternator here. This is our new one. This is a Ultima alternator. I believe this is the same brand. I got these from O'Reilly's. The part number 
is right there for you guys. So let's pop this open and see what we got. I'm gonna have to return the box. I'm gonna save the box. The core charges sometimes they want you to bring the box back with you. So don't chuck it just yet. Make sure you return your core before you throw anything away. Because they might just ask you for what you're throwing away. Let's see what we got. See if we got a match here. I believe this one's a remanufactured or maybe a new one. Why was that happening? I think it was on... Oh, I think it was on my ratchet. Sorry, everybody. I was like, what is that rattling sound? I'm like, <laughs> okay. So it looks like we have similar shapes here. Let me orient them the same. Looks about right. Our mounting positions are correct. I can already tell that I'm gonna have to switch over this bracket. I'm missing this bracket. So I'll have to switch that over as well. Comes with a new nut. So that's sweet, just in case I dropped the last one in the engine bay. And we're just missing this heat shield here. So it looks like three, three components that we need to switch over. I have a 10 millimeter 38 socket on my electronic ratchet, just to be quick about it. And I'm just gonna remove these heat shields, brackets, and transfer them over. Tighten these up in a second. I don't want to reverse my tool just yet. Get this bracket off. And now, some of these brackets do have proper orientations, and they're a little bit, they make it easy for you to line up. You see that flat end of a bracket here? fits directly into that flat end of the alternator right there. Sweet stuff. Makes it pretty easy not to mess up. So we'll just finger tighten this right now. I'll tighten this up in a second. Now I have this bracket here that holds up the wiring. Maybe I can make the all time transfer now. I believe this one will go on the side of the alternator right here. And same thing here with the alignment. A couple of notches there. Fits perfectly in that top notch. That bolt hole lines up. Okay. Now I'm just going to switch my tool over. Now, maybe the, I think the torque specs for this stuff is maybe 25 to 35 foot pounds. Nothing too tight, just snug. Now that I have everything tied up, I'm going to remove this little tag. This is probably what was rattling, as a matter of fact. It's kind of making that motorcycle sound. Gives you some uh, tips and tricks on what to do to install your alternator, but thankfully I'm here, and we're going to put this directly in the car now. Now this top bolt here, you're going to notice that there is a significant gap between the bracket and the alternator. That's okay. The nut on this side will actually slide over and that will happen when you tighten it over. Let's take this bolt in. Now, as we tighten in here, we're going to start with the finger thread. Should be all right. I'm going to pop this bolt in uh, on the bottom. Ah, damn, my hand is way too big. 
Okay, got that bolt in there. Now I'm just gonna tighten it up with my 12 millimeter socket from before. that on I'm gonna make my connections put it back just how I found it and put on my belt and test it out nice and snug put that dust boot over hear that click put this boot back over Put that on there, nice. And lastly, connect this. And then I'll just fashion this up here and zip tie it. That should be everything. I'm gonna take my flashlight and make sure the belt didn't fall off of any pulleys. Looks like some of them are a little bit off, but I think the belt will just roll right back on. I'm gonna connect our negative terminal to the battery since we finished our install. I'm gonna tighten this up. Uh, my test probes here have this set to 20 volts. Let's go ahead and fire it up. There you go, 14.26 volts at the battery. That means this alternator is charging. I'm gonna do the same test as before so you guys can confirm the validity. Put our positive probe in this over there. Sweet deal. So we have the uh, alternator situation solved on the Civic. Let's move on to the wheel bearing. 